on YouTube, it's Leo Venus here. I have an interesting video for you today. Just kidding, John Venus is also here. What's going on guys? Today, we're gonna do a different kind of video. We're gonna experiment, try something new. And it's just us talking about a topic and taking advantage that my brother is here because he is vegan. Yeah, as you can tell. So the topic of veganism is a very sensitive subject on the internet and a lot of conflict going around and misconceptions and uh, misinformation, all that kind of stuff. So this time I'm gonna take advantage that my brother is here. He knows a lot about this and we're gonna talk about it. And every single research and uh, things we talk about, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. So if you guys are interested, go down there and check the link out and you'll be able to learn more about it. We're gonna relate it to fitness and bodybuilding. How many calories do you normally consume in a day? I've never measured under 5,000 and, and sometimes it's up in 7,000. So it's definitely quite a lot of calories. You know, every, anywhere between five and 7,000 calories. Now lift your shirt up. Let's see how fat you are. See? Yeah. So obviously <laughs> not too much body fat at all. So uh, that's 7,000 calories guys. Probably three times as much as uh, you know some of my friends that do bodybuilding eat. So the first question, is it possible to build muscle while being on a vegan diet? Plenty of people have grown a lot of muscle on a pure plant-based vegan diet. For putting on muscle, do you think it's necessary to get you know extra protein from protein powder for optimal muscle growth to put on muscle mass you don't need protein powder protein you get from foods you can you can get enough protein from eating just a plant-based vegan diet or a, a meat-based diet doesn't matter what you eat you will get enough protein if you don't want to plan your diet and make all the food you want to eat and have everything planned protein powders definitely can make it a little easier to make sure you're getting enough protein but you're willing to just make a, your own smoothie with oats and stuff like that before you go to the gym you don't need protein powder. Oats? That's that's not protein, that's carbs, man. What are you talking about? Oats, man. Oats, 13 grams of protein per 100. It's, it's a lot of protein. If you have uh, 200 grams of oats, that's already 26 grams. Put in a couple of bananas, that's 30 grams. You can get plenty of protein without the protein powder. But like I said, you know, out of convenience, protein powders can definitely make it easier. That's one of the biggest misconceptions, I think, because uh, there is so much protein from, uh, you know, oats and rice and all that stuff and beans. And people don't even realize that you just, like, people think you either need to eat a lot of meat or drink a lot of protein shake. Uh, to build muscle but in reality if you're eating as, like a lot of protein from whole foods and then on top of that getting a lot of protein from from protein powder and stuff like that it could easily be overkill you don't really need that much protein you have all this hype in the fitness industry about protein powder and and how we need so much protein have you ever heard of somebody just falling down and going to the hospital he was protein deficient you know he didn't have enough protein that, that doesn't exist you never hear of someone having too little protein. The average woman needs 40 and the average man needs 50 grams of protein a day. Obviously, if you're building muscle, you're probably gonna want some more, but you know, how much more? Do you think you really need 300 grams, 400 grams of protein a day? You know, it sounds to me like that's definitely <laughs> going a little over the line. All proteins are broken down into ammonia derivatives. It's called the urea cycle. All proteins have this uh, toxic part of the amino acid that is excreted through our kidneys. Eating more protein than you need is definitely going to be an extra workload, so to speak, on your kidneys. But if you're, you've got healthy kidneys and you drink a lot of water, the risks aren't super high. So I'm not saying if you eat too much protein, you're going to have kidney failure straight away. Definitely uh, water intake if you're on a high protein diet is definitely a necessity, right? Every waste product our body has, everything that gets excreted, gets taken out of body, uses water. Drink a lot of water, guys. It's it's essential to health. If your pee is yellow, you need to drink more water. That's exactly what you should be looking at. When you take a piss, it should be white. <laughs> white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not white. Transparent, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if you're, water looking. if you're pissing white piss, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe get that checked out, guys. <laughs> so another thing that is widely discussed is uh, that People think that animal protein is a lot more complete and uh, in the amino acid profile. So what do you have to say about that? Definitely one of the biggest misconceptions about the vegan diet. All amino acids that we need, that our body needs, we can get from plants. If you think of it that way, where do, where do the animals we eat get their amino acids? You know, they get it from plants. So it's absolutely possible. You can go on to uh, mention this study that John will probably link in the description about this topic about uh, animal protein versus uh, plant-based protein in terms of bodybuilding and muscle mass. The interesting thing about these studies is that they've actually shown that all animal proteins have higher concentrations of sulfur holding amino acids. That sounds maybe really like complicated but it's just amino acids that you know have sulfur in them and what they do in our body is that they acidify our body 
And when you have this acidic environment in the body, which is called acidosis, the mechanism of the body to neutralize that acid is actually to take out calcium from your muscles and from your bones. That is bad because all your muscles use calcium for all contractions, everything like that. Calcium is super important for muscle function. So these studies talks about how animal proteins have actually shown a tendency of animal protein, the acidifying protein that acidifies your body. You lose muscle mass, especially older people. Now, young people, especially young men, have so much testosterone that even though you eat a lot of meat, you can still put on muscle mass. But the study actually showed that eating meat and uh, animal protein slows down your muscle development. So they're saying that you could actually grow even bigger, even faster if you had less of these acidic amino acids. What if you drink a lot of milk so that you get enough calcium to fight against the acidic effect of animal protein? Doesn't that, you know, make it equal again? Everyone from, from a small age uh, gets taught that milk is good for your bones. Milk you know, lots of calcium and strong bones. Milk actually has the opposite effect and the reason why it has the opposite effect is actually a couple of reasons. The first reason, the calcium in milk is actually not assimilated properly by us. We don't, we don't absorb the calcium as well as we absorb it from other sources. And the second reason is exactly what we talked about before, animal protein. The animal protein in milk will acidify your body and will make you take out calcium from your bones and muscle. Look at the statistics, either it's pure you know, crazy coincidence, or there's more to it. The countries with largest milk consumption in the, on the planet. And then you look at the statistics for the countries with the most osteoporosis on the planet. What about fish? Fish is actually the food with the highest concentrations of methionine, which is one of these sulfur holding amino acids that will acidify your body. All chemical industries, all nuclear industries, where, where do we put all the, all the toxic waste, all the poisonous stuff? Where, do, where does all that go? You know, the easiest, most convenient place to throw it all, just dump it in the sea. You know, it's gone. You don't see it. Even if it's wild fish, the sea is such a polluted place that you can find lots of heavy metals like mercury and really high concentration of these really poisonous substances that you really don't want to be getting into your body. Plant-based foods have a lot less of these sulfur holding amino acids. They have alkalizing tendency. So they have an alkalizing tendency, which is the opposite of acidifying. You want to have an alkaline environment in your body. You don't want to have an acidic environment. There is another misconception that, you know, eating, you know, cholesterol from eggs is the best way to boost your, you know, testosterone production in your body. Yeah, cholesterol is one of the biggest structural components of testosterone. So many people would, you know, would seem logical to think, yeah, cholesterol, we need to eat cholesterol to make testosterone, you know? So our bodies actually have their own biosynthesis of cholesterol. Our body makes cholesterol by itself in the liver. The liver makes all the cholesterol you need. So the cholesterol they eat actually has a tendency of staying in the blood, which is, you know, the main cause of atherosclerosis or heart disease and, and strokes and all of these infarcts and stuff that is the main killer around the, the Western world because of the Western diet is so high in cholesterol. It's completely a, a myth that you need to eat cholesterol because all our cells have cholesterol, our testosterone is built up of, of cholesterol, estrogen, lots of hormones, you know, so it's, you definitely don't need to eat it. You can post a link of, on this other uh, research. It's about the testosterone levels in vegans versus meat eaters. And this kind of puts the myth to rest that a vegan will have less testosterone. So one thing is that we eliminate all meat and uh, we're getting the protein from uh, high carbohydrate uh, sources, right? So uh, a lot of beans, a lot of uh, oats, uh, quinoa, rice, all that kind of stuff. So. A lot of people will think, wow, that's so much carbs, I'm gonna get so fat on a vegan diet. Why do so many people fear carbs? A lot of people think that carbs turn into fat, right? And the truth is, we have this metabolic pathway or these reactions in our body that can convert carbohydrates to fat, but it actually has a 30% energy cost. So only about 70% of the carbs that are actually activated to be turned into fat, will actually turn into fat. This pathway, metabolic pathway in humans is actually really small. So most of the carbohydrates that we eat get you know, burned off and carbohydrates can actually be self-oxidized. They can actually basically burn themselves away, so to speak, rather than as fat, which definitely doesn't oxidize itself and is purely just 
you know, gets just stored. It's pretty much already in stored mode, you know. It just goes straight to your storage, which is your, your adipose cells or your fat cells. And it'll just stay there until you, you know, you use it up. So that's why uh, a lot of people, a lot of bodybuilders, they either go high fat, low carb, or high carb, low fat. So obviously if you're a vegan, you're eating a shitload of carbs. So obviously you're gonna try to, uh, you know, lower the fat level down so you don't put on yeah, unnecessary weight, right? Absolutely, you know, as a vegan, you... you, you <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely, as a vegan, you, you know, you have the stereotype of vegan being really skinny, but there are plenty, I promise you, there are plenty of fat vegans around too, so, you know, you have all high, high fat foods, you have, you know, peanut butter, you have french fries, the point is, you have to keep your fat intake low, you know, our, our body's preferred source or fuel for energy is carbohydrates so yeah guys when you're thinking about the science of it of course one calorie is a measure for energy so one calorie is one calorie but depending on the source of the calorie whether it comes from protein fat carbohydrates the way the, that calorie is used in the body is completely different you have different metabolic pathways different reactions for for the different food sources you will gain a lot more fat from eating a little a little bit too much calories of fat than a little bit too much calories of carbohydrates because of the fact that carbohydrates can actually pretty much burn themselves off you get this dietary thermogenesis i don't know if you guys have ever noticed it but if you've eaten a big meal of almost pure carbo carbohydrates you feel like you're warm almost sweating but that's because of this thing called dietary thermogenesis so yeah guys um I'm about experimentation, like I would experiment anything and I encourage you guys to do the same, you know, the science is there, you can't rely on the companies and you know, the government and all that kind of stuff to tell you the truth, you gotta find it for yourself. I wasn't always vegan, I ate a lot of meat before and, and now I've been vegan for almost two years and I put on a, lo a lot of muscle mass on a vegan diet. Yeah, I can, and I'll put a, here's a before and after picture of him by the way, uh, in the past two years on the vegan diet. There's plenty of meat eaters who are a lot bigger than me, but I can also tell you there are a lot of vegans who are a lot bigger than me as well. So uh, it, not only is it possible to be big on a vegan diet, but if you believe in science, it can actually, you know, actually uh, looks like it, it can be better to build muscles to go on a vegan diet. This topic brings a lot of hate. The more research I do, the more I learn. And the more I realize, uh, you know, everyone's full of bullshit. You gotta do the research yourself. Don't let the puppet master steer you guys. So <laughs> that's pretty much it for the video. Leave a comment, let me know if you like this video. Subscribe, a lot of videos coming soon. Peace out.